from tape, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Tuesday evening, December the 30th, 1980. The Cameron Bible Camp and Conference Grounds Midwinter Camp Meeting held in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Colonel Speed Wilson, retired Marine Corps, is the speaker of the evening, speaking on buying and selling with a number. <laughs> I would say unto thee this night, My word surely is a lamp unto thy feet. And yea, I have even set my word about thee as a head, yea, even as a fence. And yea, it is even as a fence around the path that thou must try. And yea, it will even keep thee walking upon that straight and narrow path. I say unto thee, If thou begin to wander, I will even bring thee back by my word. Yea, I will even correct thee with my word. Yea, I say unto thee, I will even make my word, even as a sharp rushing instrument in your mouth. And yea, thou shalt even thresh the enemy. Yea, thou shalt even beat him down. And yea, bring him into subjection. <laughs> Well, I appreciate all of you. Thank you for your coming. We appreciate the ministers who come and ministered. And we appreciate Colonel Speed Wilson. He's an international director of the Full Gospel Businessmen. And we've known him quite a few years. We've never had the privilege of really visiting with him. Because it's like here at Full Gospel, I'm, I'm busier there than I am here. And I, unless somebody comes up and deliberately talks to me when I was at the Full Gospel uh, working, I never had time to visit with anybody. But uh, as far as meeting and knowing, it's been a privilege, and now it's been a double privilege to have him come and, and feel his sweet spirit and realize that the Lord's giving him the revelation that has been flowing through us, and it's flowing through him, and we all are moving in the same end-time move for the Spirit of the living God. Uh, I don't want to embarrass speed, but for the knowledge you and most very few of you know it I believe that Colonel Speed Wilson is today's living most decorated hero of America and it's a great honor to have a man that has stood for his country as he has and been through the thing he's been to come and speak for us and be with us I'm a patriot and I believe in America and I believe it's a country under God and I believe it's destined to bring in the king. And I believe that the flag is all glory. And those 13 stripes up there may stand for some things to others, but to me they stand for the 13 tribes of the children of Israel. And I stand forth to testify that Jesus Christ is Lord and he rules and reigns over this nation. And that he shall be king. Amen. But it takes dedication in the Christian field and on the battlefield. And without dedication on the battlefield, there wouldn't be anything to have dedication for for the rest of us. So I appreciate a man that has given his life many times and God has preserved him to be a witness first in the government and now to the nation. Because he stood in the, he stood in the halls of Congress before the presidents and the, and, and the different committees and stood there and testified that Jesus was Lord and brought things forth out of the Bible to him to show him what the Scripture says. And some of them wanted to know where he got things. He was telling us the other night in a committee he was in. He said, he, he said where, did, where did you get that information? Who got that for you? And he said, you know, everything in Washington is known by uh, the first letter of, of whatever it is. Uh, you know, D-O-D and uh, all this, you know, instead of calling out all those long names they give them, they just use abbreviated. And he said, they said, where did you get that? And he said, I got that from G-O-D. They said, yeah, I said, no, you mean D-O-D. He said, no, G-O-D, God. You know? 
That's the kind of men that God's raised up in this nation to become the rulers of the nation so that Jesus Christ can be glorified for and in his people. Now, for those of you who weren't here last... Am I coming through on this? Okay. That weren't here the last couple of nights, the message on rapture that he gave us, where he went into every facet of different arguments about the rapture and used scriptures to back up all of the things pro and con of the different arguments. Every person of the fundamental belief in America should hear. And then the one on the signs of the times or uh, something like that, knowing the times and the seasons, where he went into the details of different things that I had never thought of like the Lord has showed him of what's going to happen in the Middle East. is is a wonderful study of the scriptures concerning the Middle East. So tonight we're going to hear another detailed subject here, buying and selling with a number. And it's a privilege to have him come and do this for us. The Thank Lord the bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Sir. Great to look around. I see some faces that are shining and bright and big smiles that weren't so a few days ago. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. You got Jesus written all over your face. <laughs> That's that that we talked about the first night here, the acronym, as he's talking about acronyms in Washington, like DOD. And we mentioned that they intended to uh, name the new uh, Department of Education. They thought about naming it the Department of Public Education, but the acronym would have been DOPE, and they changed their mind. <laughs> but I think that would have been a pretty good name for it. And uh, leads to nothing but destruction. But uh, as I pointed out another beautiful acronym in the Bible of gospel, G-O-S-P-E-L. God's only Son provides eternal life, gospel. Tonight, we'd like to talk about buying and selling with a number. And again, we'll be, uh, as in the past, we won't be teaching it like you heard it taught before. Well, we know that we're very close to buying and selling with a number because it's an event of the end time. And uh, we've had some unusual teachings about it, some uh, pretty far afield. But I think you would recognize today that on almost any endeavor in the world, there is a control number involved. Even uh, in uh, the Department of Defense, uh, because of the uh, unusual kind of education that had occurred, and I guess you could call it an education. Anyway, they put in their time in schools, but very little education. They get certificates of attendance in some case, not a certificate of achievement. And they didn't know the alphabet. So uh, we even had to have file clerks we had to file by number because they didn't know what came after R, <laughs> that sort of thing. And uh, sometimes we found out they couldn't even count. Uh, particularly if you got beyond seven digits. And so there were control numbers all throughout the whole system. And we too will end up, if we haven't already, we probably already are, as you know, your social security number is pretty well your control number. But before we get into that, I'd like to uh, look at some scriptures to, con to correct some misunderstandings and misinterpretations of the scripture. We pointed out every night uh, as we've talked is 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is breathed by the Spirit of God and is good for doctrine, reproof, and correction. We're using it largely uh, on the rapture and again tonight for correction. And that's the only source for correction I could see. Now, would you open your Bibles to Revelation 13? Now, this buying and selling of the number, we'll get to it a little later on in Revelation 13, and it starts at Revelation 13, 16. But I think we ought to look at context. Context is very important. And uh, it may help as you go through to sort out which beast, beast is being talked about. And as Brother Lee has pointed out, uh, the term that's called beast in uh, the throne room there's a different word from this. The one over there in the throne room should be creatures. This one is beast. And they, 
In the Bible, they usually refers to the unbeliever, and it does in this case. They worship the dragon. The dragon is who? Satan, the devil, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is likened to him? In other words, who is his equal in power, and etc.? Who can make war against him? In other words, he's very powerful. We talked about that group last night, the International Money Group. And there was given unto him, and there will be a representative of this individual, and time permitting, we'll talk about Mr. 666 tomorrow night, the time permitting. Given unto him a mouth to speak great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him for 42 months. And then goes on, but verse 8. And all, this is what I'm really after, and all that dwelled upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Or read it another way, everyone on the earth will worship him except those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now please remember that. When Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, he meant it is finished. The rest of it is up to you, and you choose. As Brother Lee has pointed out, God reacts to our reactions, or he responds to our responses. But you have to respond. Now, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, I'm pretty sure. And you won't worship him again. It's mentioned again. You won't worship his image. And you'll find that in uh, Revelation 13, verses 14 and 15. And we'll pick those up now. I want to continue now to Revelation 13, 11. And I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like unto a lamb, but he spoke as a dragon. He spoke as the dragon gave him to speak. He was the dragon's mouthpiece. And he exercised all the power of the first beast, remember the first beast is Satan, before him, and caused the earth and all of them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, Satan, whose deadly wound was healed. Now, I've read books, and they said that Mr. Antichrist, uh, I use that term because that's what they use, uh, is going to get a hole in the head, and uh, then he'll be healed. No. Satan was wounded in the head. Genesis 3.14. God put a curse on Satan and prophesied and said, The seed of the woman... Who's that? Jesus. Shall wound or bruise your head. So he's, and Satan is pretty well. In fact, there's a book around, Satan's alive and well on the earth. He got sick here this afternoon. But anyway, <laughs> and he's going to get a lot sicker. We're not searching for him anymore. I've forgotten those words, but we're pouncing on him. <laughs> after him. He was going around like a lion. Glory to God, you are the lions. He was a liar. He was faking it, but you're for real. Praise God. Well, evil does abound. Jesus said, as evil shall abound, my grace shall abound all the more. Well, verse 13. He, still talking about the second beast, does great wonders, even causes fire to come down from heaven upon the earth in the sight of many men. Well... Uh, this system would have the power of thermonuclear activity, if that's what it's talking about. Atomic bombs is the usual terminology. In fact, we're in that day. We'll find in Joel, we talked about it the other night, second chapter, verse 30, in the original Hebrew, it says, And in the last days there will be pillars or columns of smoke and fire shaped like palm trees. You'll find that full explanation in your Young's Concordance on page 753, if you can't read Hebrew, which I can't. In verse 14, And received them that dwelled on the earth by the means, and deceived them by the means of these miracles. Miracles there is signs and wonders, which he, the second beast now, had power to do in the sight and in behalf of the first beast. That was Satan. Saying to them that dwelt upon the earth, they should make an image of the beast which had the wound by the sword. And that's interesting. He's wounded by the sword. Just Still talking about the same one. What's the sword? The Word of God. 
Jesus slipped it to him about three times in the wilderness, remember? He said, it is written. And he really didn't have to stab the devil. The devil just ran on to it. He just stuck it out there and he ran on to it. So it's very clear the scriptures fulfill that. And yet he lived. Well, he's still alive today. But his days are very short. So he's in a hurry. Verse 15. And he, the second beast, had power to give life or breath to the image of the first beast, that he should speak and cause those who would not worship the image to be put to death. Notice now, it's the worshiping the image. We haven't mentioned a number yet. And he, the second beast, called all, caused all, A-double-L, both small, great, rich, poor, free slave, to receive a mark. I think your Bible will say, I don't know, in or own. Bibles differ on this, and we'll say why in a minute. But either own or in their right hand, or in or own their foreheads, so that no man might buy or sell unless he had the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Verse 18, And here is for wisdom. Let him that has understanding, or some intelligence, count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man. It is not the number of a man. It's the number of man, and his number, 666. Now, we can talk uh, about theomatics, but we'll go into that tomorrow night when we talk about numerics and Mr. 666, who he really is. Just briefly, a book, Theomatics, which we use computers to explore possibilities, knowing that every letter in the Hebrew and Greek alphabet has a numerical equivalent, and it was quite a revelation. The revelation began with a Dr. Pannon at the turn of the century and was then carried out, and then recently, with the aid of computers, much revelation came forth through that, and we'll cover some of that tomorrow night. But 666 is the number of a man's name, apparently, and it's also a system. Now, uh, the English translates generally, uh, agree, gentle translations, and you can look these things up. Uh, you can even go after you find out the Greek uh, word for mark uh, and those type things. You can look them up in, uh, in the, you find them in the concordance, and then you can look them up in uh, regular Greek to English dictionaries. But there's a little word spelled E-N in English and Greek, and you'd have to know in context whether it means in or own. So you can see why in some Bibles you'll find this mark is own, and in another Bible you'll find it's in. And you really can't tell from the context which it is, because it could be either one. But we'll explore both possibilities. Now, if this mark is in the forehead, that'd be the inner mind, would it? you know, in, back here. It's your soul, your mind, your will, your intellect, your emotions. Now, as you know, once you receive the, the Lord as your Savior, baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're being sanctified. You're in the process of putting on the mind of Christ. Now, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are in Antichrist system. There are two kingdoms involved, the kingdom of the devil and the kingdom of God. You're either in one of the two. So if you are not in the process of putting on the mind of Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit and the washing of the words, you know the scriptures, then you have the mind of Antichrist and you'll think his thoughts. Whether you like that or not, that's a fact. So if it's in, then it doesn't refer to you because you have a different mind. Now then we look at if it's on, we all know the scriptures that God is not confused by marks externally. He looks upon the inner man. So either way, it doesn't really apply to you if your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But we'll see the Scriptures a lot clearer in a minute. I'm just laying that ground so you can see that whether it's in or on matters very little. Because if you're in Christ, it's, it's, all, uh, <laughs> it's all accomplished pretty well. But I want you to understand that I'm not trying to persuade anyone I'm just going to give you some scriptures that's going to cast a lot of doubt on what you've heard about this mark in the past. Now you find in, uh, in Matthew 12:30 and in Luke 11:23, "He that is not with me is against me." That literally means Antichrist. 
And, of course, we know all the scriptures that uh, I forgot to give them. You'll find in 1 Samuel 16, 7, and in Jeremiah 17, 10, and Acts 1, 24, that man looks on the outer appearance, but God looks upon the inner man, or the heart. So that's very clear. Now then, let's look at some of these so we can see. You have to buy or sell, and I think this is interesting. Most of the fundamental commentators that I've seen, remember Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, and that goes on to say, because you rejected knowledge, I shall reject you. So you should be getting a little knowledge from time to time. Now you can see on there that Revelation 13, 17 looks a little different. To buy or sell, you will need one. I repeat, you only need one of these things to buy and sell, not all three. I hope you remember enough English that when you hear an or, that's an option. You do this or that, but not both, necessarily. I learned that in the military. Any lawyer can tell you that. When I got a military order, it says do this or that. I had a choice. But it said if you do this and that, I did them both. See the difference, the connective? And I've checked it out in the Greek, and this is true. It's, it's an or. Now, the word mark there is translated, uh, well, the King James sort of confuses things a little bit. Every time it talks about God's people being marked, it calls it sealed. But every time it talks about this other group, it calls it marked. But really the only difference, and again, you can look it up in your concordance, is that in case of God's marking, it's an embossment. You know what an embossment is? But it's still a marking. It's a number. It's a seal. An embossment is something that's raised. It's raised on the front. And usually something has to be added to whatever is being embossed. Did you know that God added something to you called the Holy Spirit? But the same word is a marking device in the case of Satan, except it's an engraving. When you engrave something, you remove something. That may be, you know, you sort of scratch it out. That may be the reason we've called oh, the devil old scratch from time to time. Because the scripture says he came to steal, to take something, to deceive and to kill. That's quite a ministry. Very effective. Now, I think it's really interesting that if you have a piece of plastic in your pocket called a credit card or debit card, whatever you want to call them, God described it pretty accurately. On the front, it's embossed. It's raised. On the back, it's engraved, and it is a number. I thought that was pretty accurate of God to forecast that uh, some 2,000 years back, that it would be in a, a number, an identifying mark, and it would be engraved and embossed. In some Bibles, well, we'll come to that later on, but I want you to get in mind right now that you need only one of these to buy or sell, or buy and sell. But most of us will be taking a number, an embossment, an engraving. Now, your name is not the name of the beast. You're named by another name, and we'll give you those scriptures later on. You're named by an altogether another name. And the number of your name will not add up to 666 scripturally, so it's not the number of his name. Now, if you were the, the name of the beast would be, and Theomatix proves that the son of perdition, the man of sin in Second Thessalonians 2nd chapter, is not a man, it is a system, because it's in a, in a neuter gender, indicating it's a system and not an individual at all. So if you are part of the Council of Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, or Rockefeller Rothschild, then the name of the beast and the number of a name is probably yours. You own the store, so you don't need a number. But the rest of us will need a number to buy or sell. Now, you would think, well, you would know, that if this taking this number would doom you to eternal, to eternal damnation, uh, you would have thought that we would have read something about it before we get to the book of Revelation. And I'll give you some scriptures. 3 John 2. I pray above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. And it didn't say up until the time you have to have a number to prosper. James 5.13, go forth, buy and sell, and make a profit. Didn't say anything about it. Stop profiting when you have to do it with a number. 1 Corinthians 7.30, and the Christians buy 
as though they possessed not. That is a blessing. <laughs> That's a real blessing. The real key to having things is do you possess them or do they possess you? That's real interesting. A big difference. First Timothy 6.10 says the love of money is the root of all evil. Now, I can find no scripture that said we were to stop at any certain time, but we'll give you others on it as we go along. Now, I'll give you the... I couldn't pronounce the uh, Greek word, so there's no use giving it to you. However, I believe it's the difference between marked and sealed. But one of the Bible translations I've looked at, that I believe it was the Amplified, but I'm not sure. Every time it said sealed, it had parentheses marked, and every time it said marked, it had parentheses sealed, so that you would get the idea that they were essentially the same, same word. In fact, the same word is used in the Old Testament. Now, we'll start giving you... Well, I'll slip this on down. And you can see the marked and sealed. Now, here are some of the marks. and I'm going to use uh, marked because most people are more familiar with the mark than they are the seal. We've been more conscious of Antichrist than we have of Christ. Ezekiel 9.4. I'll read it. And the Lord said to his servant, Go through the midst of the city and set a mark upon the foreheads of those that are grieved at the evil that's done. Who would that be? It wasn't Satan, it was the saints, because they're the ones that are grieved at the evil. The evil ones are doing it. Then he said, Then go after him and slay all, but do not come near those upon whom my mark is placed. Isn't that interesting? Now, if you can remember Ezekiel 9.4, you can sure remember Revelation 9.4, same numbering. Revelation 9.4 says, Hurt only those which have not the mark of God enter on their foreheads. So all the rest of them, just repeating what uh, Ezekiel has said. Revelation 7, 3. Hurt not the earth, nor the sea, nor the trees, until we, and this is God speaking, we have marked the servants of God enter on their foreheads. See where they're being marked? And you'll find Revelation 7, 4, that the 144,000, the multitude of overcomers, 144,000 is simply 12 times 12, God's divine order time multitudes. It's not the Jehovah's Witnesses, but we'll talk about that later on. And uh, they had the mark of God in their foreheads. Revelation 14, 1. The, land was, the Lamb was standing on Mount Zion, a spiritual condition, with those having his Father's name written in or on their foreheads. See, you don't have the name of the beast. You have another name. Hallelujah. Revelation 22, 4. The servants of God shall see his face, and his name shall be in or on their foreheads. In Ephesians, God tells us how we receive the mark or the seal of God. Ephesians 1, 13. After you believed, you were marked or sealed with the what? Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4, 30. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are marked until the day of redemption. That's repeated in John 6, 27. It's repeated in 2 Corinthians 1, 22. I think you begin to get the idea. By the way, we're having witches coming to know the Lord and getting filled with the Holy Spirit. There's Brother Glenn, and one of them told us that when, he, when she was in the advanced stages of becoming one of the controlled witches in England... In the final stages, there was a secret among them, and they told them, Now, when you get around these people that have a glowing area on their forehead, leave them alone. She found an interesting thing. The only people she ever met that had this glowing a mark in their forehead spoke in tongues. And they were told to leave them alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> found a lion. <laughs> well... The Scriptures reassures us many times. Now, you recognize that all this has all been going on long before we ever get to Revelation 13. 14, 13. So God's marking His peace way back over in Ezekiel and all the early phases, Revelation 9 and 7. and It's even explained in Ephesians how we're marked and John and Second Corinthians and all of those. And then the first time we ever read it is uh, anything about a mark is in Revelation 13, after God has always done it. But what about the, those who take the mark or a number on their foreheads or and or in their right hand as a means of identification to be able to buy and sell? 
Well, we'll look at some of those. You'll find out that the worshiping of the beast or his image is the sin and not the taking of the number. We'll look at some of those. I think you've already gotten the others. We'll look at these. Revelation 13, 4. They worship the dragon which gave power to the beast, and they worship the beast. But remember, that's not you. Everybody on the earth will worship except. That's Revelation 13, 8. But all who dwelled upon the earth shall worship the beast, except those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And I want you to know that that's repeated in Revelation 21, 27 also. Now then, Revelation 14, 9. If any man worship the beast and... Now there we got to stop. Look at those ands. And always means in addition to. Now if it had said worship the beast or his image or received his mark enter on his forehead, the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of God, well, then would be in trouble. That isn't what the Scripture says, and neither does it say it in the Greek. You have to worship the beast and his image and receive his mark. But the mark alone doesn't do it. Revelation 14, 11. The smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, they that had no rest day nor night, who had worshipped the beast and his image and received his mark. No war is there either. Revelation 19, 20. Them that had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image were cast alive into the... There it is, and again. So you see the and is also necessary in there. Look at Revelation 15, 2. Now this, uh, I'm going to read it with the last part of it first to identify who God's talking about. They have the harps of God, so they're God's folks. Had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name. That's a total victory, glory to God. And this is confirmed in Revelation 20, verse 4. And to remove any doubt, you might read Revelation 12, 9 through 11. All says the same things. I'm convinced that many Christians will suffer needlessly because they're convinced that taking this number will doom them. Scripture doesn't say that. They got it out of their Schofield notes in their fundamental church. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. The blood of the Lamb is quite capable of overcoming the whole thing. And uh, so forth. Well, I think you can see that. And we'll have a time of questions and try to answer later on in it. But don't ever forget there's a difference between an or and an and. Or gives you an option. And does not. And says it's in addition to. And there's nowhere there that you'll find that you're doomed simply by taking the number. It's always you have to have and worship the beast and or worshipped his image. One time it says beast, the next time it says image, but most of the time it says worship the beast and worshipped his image and took the number. But remember Revelation twelve eleven, if that's any consolation to you. Now, let's look how this system is going to work. And many people are beginning to find out how it's going to work. Willard Cantillon in 1939 began to see that this was simply a number now, in 1939, no one had ever heard the word computer. In fact, the computers really didn't come into their own until around 1948. It's interesting, isn't it? They had the relay system prior to that time, but it was in 1948 that God gave us the transistor that made all this possible. Do you know today, as a dear friend of mine at work for IBM, back around 1948 and in that time frame, they had a computer that was 10 feet by 10 feet by 10 feet, a 10-foot cube. And it cost $5 million to build it. And he says, today you can go down to Sears Roebuck and buy a Texas instrument calculator, a computer, for $25. It'll do better than that thing that they had that was in the big box. And uh, it's going to get even more exciting with the semiconductor field. So Willard Candelon, uh Glenn probably knows that. Glenn went around, I mean... Willard went around telling everybody that would listen, and he'd also tell some that wouldn't listen. Uh, Willard's just that kind of guy. But anyway, would bless this. I love the fellow. 
in 1973, he wrote a book entitled The Day the Dollar Dies. Very interesting book. Then he wrote another book later on, uh, The World Money Changer. And then I saw another one back there. Which, uh, he's written a, a new one. And I scanned it, and it's talking more in depth about the International Money Group and that type thing. Now, I began to get interested in this when I was working with computers in the Marine Corps and had the privilege of being the second in the second class to go through the Department of Defense Computer Institute. And the only reason the Marine Corps sent me because I'd been assigned a job of setting up a computer center or seeing if, uh, conducting a feasibility study for a specific purpose, and it ended up with the computer being set up out in Kansas City that runs the Marine Corps, and I got another medal for that one. The uh, IBM fellow working with me got a $75,000 bonus. But anyway, <laughs> cost me $20 to buy a new set of ribbons to put the other one in. But anyway, <laughs> somebody said, hey, where's the justice in that? I don't know. But anyway... Saturday, 15 June 1974, in the Washington Star News, the feature story in a center section was The Cash Left Society. Now, that was six years ago. Well, it was very interesting. Even six years ago, they pointed out that there were three cities in the United States that could, you, could, uh, you could live very well without any money, as long as you had a plastic card. Well, you can live now in any city with a plastic card. You don't need any money at all. All you need is a line of credit or some money in a bank. Now, Business Week of 4 August 1975 featured an article, Bank Cards Cover the Country. And it was interesting, they had a federal eagle on the cover with his wings spread, <laughs> and all of his feathers were credit cards. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to read you what they had to say about it. It was a rather lengthy article, very complete, because the system coming and people that read Business Week need to know it. Quote, there has never been anything like this spread of economic funds transfer. Remember that, EFT. Computer terminals throughout the cities and states and entire regions. And the international agreement for the form standards for the plastic cards. Now get that, international agreement for the plastic cards and the magnetic strip or stripe that makes them work has already been reached, and it was four years ago, by the International Standards Organization of the United Nations. We know who that belongs to from last night. EFT is coming fast, and its essential elements will be in place within three years. That would have been 1978. The system was complete in 1978. We all, Glenn's told you about that, and I've worked with it too. I thought this was a beautiful way to end the article. They said, anyone looking for this sometime in the far distant future is looking through the wrong end of his binoculars. <laughs> I thought that was a good way to... If you've ever looked through the wrong end of your binoculars, it looks like it's a long way off. But if you turn it around, it's probably already here. <laughs> Very interesting uh, how the plastic cards go. The 9th of August, 1975, and this was rather funny to me because I was a senior warden of St. James Episcopal Church in Washington, D.C., and if you've ever worked with church boards, and I know most of you have, uh, you go around and you get your pledges, and uh, then we always had to discount the pledges by about 15 20 percent because people would leave or people wouldn't pay their pledge and that sort of thing. And so uh, I jokingly one night said, well, why don't we uh, take up Master Charge? At that time, it was Master Charge instead of Master Card and Bank of America Card, which is now Visa. And they thought I was joking, but I, I was in a way. Well, Saturday 9, August 1975, in the Detroit Free Press, <laughs> page 4, headline, New Credit Card Plan, Churches Will Let You Pray Now and Pay Later. <laughs> The article reported, there's a lengthy article, that the National Council of Churches, a Rockefeller organization, has approved the use of master charge and visa for their members to pay their tithes and offerings. Fortune magazine, May 1977, had a feature article, More Bang for the Buck Through Electronic Banking. Still a very complete description of the whole system. Now, the Computer Society, Time magazine, a very complete one, 20 February 78, said, For the so-called miracle chip has a calculating cal capability equal to that of a room-sized computer of only 25 years ago. We just mentioned that. 
Do you know what the chip is? The chip is about a quarter inch square, and if you turn it on its side so thin, you can't even see it. You can put 64,000 pieces of information on one of those little chips. And then they ended there as they said, Those who first used fire must have terrified their generation, such as the computer today. <laughs> Don't be afraid of it. It works real good. Plastic cards replace checks in Iowa stores. You'll see these all over the area. And by the way, on the buying and selling with a number, you many of you have heard the stories about people who are getting Social Security or government checks were told the little instruction said they wouldn't be able to cash the check unless they were willing to receive an identifying mark. I've heard that. I've never seen any of it, but it's, uh, it's appeared in the paper, the Sunday Times Sentinel of uh, Columbus, Ohio. There's an article on it, and 1984 was the year they said that that system should be in place. Don't plan on it being in 84. It may be sooner, because they usually don't distribute forms four years ahead of time. Let's look how this system will work, and it'll work. By the way, the uh, magnetic stripe on the back is what makes the thing work. There's a lot of information there, including your Social Security number and whatnot. However, the magnetic stripe will probably go away and be replaced by one of those silicone chips implanted in there because it gets so much more information in one of those little chips than they can in this magnetic stripe. Now, first off, uh, well, you, need, you can't get one of these cards without a Social Security number. Isn't that interesting? And uh, you can't get a job without a Social Security number. In fact, you can't do anything without a Social Security number in the country. In fact, the hospitals have been set up for many, many years to uh, give a Social Security number to a child who lives beyond, I think it was 48 or 24 hours. And uh, there's a lot of advantages to it if we have time. And if you're interested, I can point out the advantages. There are a few disadvantages. Now, you already have your Social Security number. By the way, in most of the states today, your driver's license number is your Social Security number. It is in Virginia, where I come from. And it's interesting enough, in 1967, when Jerusalem returned to the control of the nation Israel, we dropped our service numbers and we all became identified by Social Security numbers. And it was interesting, with uh, Nelson Rockefeller as the senior member present in uh, 1976, I guess it was, at the Air Force Academy, at the graduates, not a single name was called to receive their diploma, only Social Security numbers. Wouldn't that grab you? Well, they had the right man present. Nelson Rockefeller. I wonder if he had the right number to get where he went. But anyway, yeah, he did. His number was 666. That'd get him in. But anyway, thank God I don't, well, I'm not judging him. I'm just estimating. <laughs> so it, uh, well, and then all you need is a little money on deposit. Or if you don't have any money, a line of credit. And so uh, you can go to any uh, computer system, EFT, the Electronic Funds Transfer. You go into any of the stores now. You can see them around. And, uh, in fact, it's getting more and more difficult to buy with cash. In fact, I saw a cartoon the other day at a checkout counter, and the checkout person said, Cash? Do you have some identification? <laughs> <laughs> Probably wanted to see his credit card before they take his cash. Some of you may know Lenny Anderson, a real character, a miracle. He has a minister like uh, Catherine Kuhlman, and he almost embarrasses me because I don't like to joke with waitresses and others, but he's one of those kind. But anyway, uh, every time he goes to check out after we've had dinner or breakfast or something, he'll ask the, the girl usually at the checkout counter at the cash register, he says, do you accept out-of-state cash? <laughs> And a good many of them have to think about that for a minute. One of them called the manager to see if they accepted the right to cash. But anyway, so then all you do, it's, uh, it's, it's a numerical value in a computer. So you go in. Now let's see what's going to happen. By the way, there are many companies that quit paying their people a long time ago. Uh, I, had, I had relatives that worked for Firestone and Goodyear. They lived in and around Akron, Ohio. And also had a friend that worked for Kaiser Industries and all the others. And all they did was, uh, they, and if, if they had a pay envelope in there, if they were a card, time card puncher, on payday they'd come and there'd be a little envelope in there. And you've seen the kind, the computer, it says, put your thumb over here and your other thumb over here and jerk firmly. And when you do, the center pops out. 
and it says the following amount has been departed, deposited in this number, and it's their Social Security number. And they know it's in the Firestone Bank or the Kaiser Bank or wherever. And so they, they never saw any money unless they went to the bank to get some. And so the unions advised them, and rightfully so, why not let the bank uh, pay your utility bills, all of them, telephone included? And some of them went so far as to let the utility company, uh, I mean, let the bank pay their MasterCard or Visa, because you'll see most banks handle both cards. It's real nice, because in Akron, Ohio, the same computer runs the banks as it does the utilities. Same computer. It's a computer service center, data processing center. So as the bills come in, they don't really come in. The computer generates them, and they're just blipping numbers back and forth. And at the end of the month, you get a statement. shows you what your water bill was and everything. It's all paid. The date it was paid. Everything is all paid. Your MasterCard was such a bit. It's all paid and everything. No paper changed hands. It's just one computer blipping to another one, either by wire or by satellite, and uh, not touched by human hands. <laughs> And uh, all taken care of. Very, very good. Plus the fact you didn't have to pay for extra checks. You didn't have to pay 15 cents for postage. And everything went real good. And you got a bank statement there that says it was paid. And if the utility company back says it didn't pay, you tell them you got a problem. Go see the bank. I got it right here. It says it did. So it's a real good system. Nothing wrong with it at all. I, uh, my retirement check is deposited directly in the Bath County National Bank. Because I'm not there some of the times. And besides... Uh, just works out real great. And you've been getting notes to have your retirement checks. Go right ahead. Nothing wrong with it. You have to end up at the bank anyhow. If you want to take it all out as soon as they get it, that's your problem. You can do it. But anyway, uh, it doesn't get lost in the mail and all that. I thought Ronald Reagan was real cute. Somebody asked him how he's going to take care of the mail problem. And he said, well, he was going to mail all the Postal Service's pay in unmarked envelopes. <laughs> <laughs> might speed it up. But anyway, so now that you've got a, a bank balance and a master charge or a line of credit and a master card or visa, now you're ready to buy or sell. So you walk up to a place that they call the point of sale, POS. You'll see them. All the stores have them now. By the way, all it takes to make this system work is a point of sale, a terminal, a computer terminal, and a telephone wire because it'll transmit over the telephone wire. Uh, Don Moss, a dear brother from Canton, Ohio, who's a uh, real wheel with a well-known Pentecostal church, and they have a lot of missions in India. And when I was telling about this at his church, he got up and said, well, I didn't share this with the congregation, but said, remember when I was gone about a month ago over to India to check out with our missionaries over there? He said, when I got to New Delhi, by air, by jet. Then he says, I took a smaller airplane on up. Then I took a train, then I took a bus, and then I got a beat-up taxi cab and finally ended up with an ox cart, uh, which finally took me to the hotel where we were going to meet. And he said, in the hotel, uh, no running water in, the, in his room. You had to go down the hall to wash your face and shave. If you had to go to the bathroom, that's the little thing with the path. Not a house with a bath, but a house with a path. And out back down there. But when he got ready to leave, he paid his bill with a Visa plastic card. Needs a telephone line, and it'll finally get to where it'll zip it to the satellite, and down over here, instant transfer of funds. So, uh, all you need is a piece of plastic and the number. Now, in the more advanced systems, this is the way it'll work. It works this way in Washington, D.C., and other places. You walk up, you've got your things, they've checked them out, and by the way, they've used the universal product code, the UPC, you know, there's little black lines on all your products. And there's a little glass thing in the counter about the size of your credit card. And they just slide those marks over it, and it's being registered up here. The price has already been adjusted, and that's all taken care of. Everything's going along. And it's a lot better than it used to be when the individual had to punch buttons, because now when you get home, there'll be enough abbreviation by each number. You know exactly what each item paid, what, what it cost. And uh, so when you're through, and uh, you've already given them your card, and they'll slip the card in with that part down or up, whichever way the instruction happens to be. And there will either be a, a telephone dial facing you, or it can be a punch button. Either way, it's something like, it's exactly like the telephone dial or, or, or numbering system. Did you ever notice on your telephone there's some marks on there that don't make any sense now? They will shortly. They'll make some sense. And uh, 
So you've been given a personal identification number. It's a PIN number, P-I-N, personal identification number. So the checkout person can't see that. You either dial it in or punch it in, and it's either a four- or five-digit number. And then when they hit the total button, a green light comes on, all's taken care of. Everything's ordered. The money's transferred from your number to the company's number. It's all paid for. Now, if a red light comes on, there's something wrong. And uh, they can pick up and talk to the computer or something and find out whether it's overbalanced or whether there's something wrong in the system. And if you just didn't have enough money to pay for it, you may have to put the T-bones back and take a soybean substitute. But uh, anyway, you'll take care of it one way or the other. A lot of things have been going on with this point of sale because uh, the inventory has been adjusted. Every one of those items that were checked out, there was one taken out of the stock automatically by a computer. And when it gets down to a predetermined level, they only have 2,000 bottles of ketchup left. The computer will automatically reorder from the warehouse computer. People don't even have to watch it. It'll automatically reorder. And when I was putting the computer center in and we were looking at automatic warehousing, we went to one by control data. And they showed us this warehouse. And this is the way it would work. The computer gets the order. And the computer uh, sends the message out to a, a forklift type operation. Really, it's just a number in a row. And the forklift will wheel around and follows a magnetic tape that's on the floor. And it'll follow it down until it gets to the right number. Then it turns around and faces the stack. And it has a scanner up at the top. And it'll go all the way to the top until the scanner sees that there are no more boxes. And if you wanted 15 boxes, it'll come down 15 boxes and pick them up and turn around and go back out and carry it out and set it down on that store's number. And uh, we had just gotten there. They were a little embarrassed. One of the computers went blind. One of the forklifts went blind. Its scanner went out. And it went down to the right row, but it couldn't see, so it just started. It had just, it, it, just, it had just punched holes all in the offset. But anyway... They were trying to apologize to me, and I said, well, I'd been in big commands, and I had about that much problem with Marines trying to drag race with forklifts. <laughs> Laying rubber man all the way to the end of it, and then they couldn't stop and pow into the wall and wonder what happened. It's great to work with young people. <laughs> Some of them don't get very old. But anyway... So it's all directly paid for, and all that's all taken care of be buying and selling with a number. It's very simple. Now, it's very interesting. Out in California a few years ago, if you've been around California, there's a big bear grocery store around. You know, California's flag, big bear. And so the big bear grocery stores weren't doing too good. So they, uh, they thought, well, in marketing, you know, if you can get people to come into your place of business for two or three or four or five or six times consistently, uh, then they're hooked. So Big Bear, frantic, they figured, well, the way to get the people in here is to go master charge. Knowing that their markup was really only 2 or 3% per product, and they have to pay master charge 2 or 3% to, pro to process the, the, the paper or the funds. But they were willing to take a loss because they were going in the hole anyway. <laughs> it would just be another big thing to dump in bankruptcy, so they figured they'd go... Well, after six months, and at the end of six months, they were going to cut it off because they figured they had the people hooked and they'd cut it off and it'd be all right. Well, at the end of the six months, guess what? Here's what they found. They found that people will buy approximately one-third more with this than they will if they have to pay cash. People just haven't waked up to the fact that this thing is money. They also, in California, there's funny money around with Tijuana down the way. They print $100 bills with Jimmy Carter's picture on it, a few things like that. But anyway, but so they didn't have any funny money problems because they weren't taking money. They didn't have any cold checks or rubber checks because they weren't taking checks. And they could know every morning when they opened the store what their balance was the night before. They didn't have to wait till the end of the week or a month to know what their status was. So they didn't have to borrow money. They didn't have to warehouse their stock. They didn't have to pay interest. And it's just very interesting, too. They cut their uh, accounting staff in half because there wasn't any accounting. The computer was taking care of all the accounting. So then they got the National Cash Register point of sale uh, outlets so that their inventory could be automatically adjusted. So they got rid of a lot of people there. Teamsters Union didn't like this, but it was working out pretty good. 
So Big Bear kept the MasterCard. Well, it didn't do them much good. Their competition started with Visa. So they're all off and running. Out there a while back, I saw a, a cigarette vending machine. And if you had MasterCard or Visa, you could get a pack of cigarettes. Just slip it in, and they would buy the thing. Cigarettes. I like what the Englishman says. He says, smoking won't send you to hell, but you sure smell like you've been there. But anyway... <laughs> He says, you don't smoke anyway. It's the cigarette that smokes. You're just a sucker on the other end. <laughs> and that's what Secretary of Health, Education, Welfare said. And it's true. He said, smoking cigarette or tobacco is the only product in the world from which the consumer receives absolutely no benefit. None. And we call ourselves intelligent beings. Do you know smoking cigarettes will cost you today approximately $15,000 if you in a lifetime? And for that money, this is the return you get. You die 10 years sooner than the non-smoker. That's a fringe benefit. You will be in the hospital three times as often. And your chances of dying with cancer is probably about five to ten times greater than a non-smoker. So that's what you get for your fifteen thousand dollars. So, like Bob Mumford, somebody asked him, one of the kids asked him, "Does will eating will eating bacon send you to hell?" He says, "No, you can eat bacon and get to heaven a little quicker." You know. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're finding out that God had the right diets, but anyway. Two percent. Banking cards. Well, night, very interesting. I was down at uh, Bradenton, and a lady brought in a paper. This was back in December 1974, and a decision was made in Washington, D.C. They ruled in Washington and the banking board that a, banking com a bank computer terminal placed somewhere other than on bank property does not constitute a branch bank therefore does not come under the restriction of the branch bank laws. I don't know how they arrived at that, except it must be within the desires of the International Money Group to have it that way. Because you can do anything, almost anything, at one of these terminals that you could do if you were sitting across the desk from the president of the bank. In fact, some of them, if you get to a point that you can't do what you want to do, you can pick up a receiver and somebody in the bank will talk to you. So, very good. Now, the central computer that makes the system work in the United States is located at St. Louis. It's the master computer here, the Federal Reserve computer. I want to, just in a passing comment, have you heard there's a, there's a computer in Brussels that's in a six-story building? And, uh, the building is all six, many floors, and it's all full of computer, and they jokingly call it the beast, and its serial number is 666. That's garbage, just like some other things we've talked about. Those people are not dumb. All you need is access to all the other computers in the world, and all you need is a terminal over there or wherever you want it. If you go via satellite, all you need is a, a readout center. You don't need a big computer. In fact, if you had a computer as big as that building, you could take care of all the people that may be on any of the other planets out there. But, you know, in the Marine Corps, we have all the Marine Corps personnel, all their information on it, and a computer not much bigger than this whole thing right here. This miniaturization can do it. You can probably put everybody in the whole world and all the information you need in a computer not bigger than six foot by six foot by six foot, just a pure information storage unit, and get an instant readout. No individual's information would be more than 30 seconds away. Because you sort by number, you just punch in his number and it all blips through so quick. That you... In fact, the drum is turning so fast that the, the pickup head is literally flying on the air boundary that's on the drum. It's literally flying. you got problems when it quits flying. It tears the drum up, we found out. But anyway, let's... Uh, by the way, the banks, if there's anything the banks hate, is free money. Did you know that? Well, the reason the banks would like to get this is one thing. It costs about, on an average, of 20 cents per check to process one of those checks. So this way it's done instantly, electronically. I had some friends that got out of the Marine Corps, and they'd been involved in studies like Glenn and Irma had, 
And so they sent up a, a, a contracting service out on the Beltway. The Beltway goes around Washington, and they jokingly call themselves the Beltway Bandits. And, uh, and they're doing rather well, but to start out with, they had a pretty good-sized payroll, and they quite often wouldn't have the money to pay the people until the Defense Department reimbursed them for the study that they had done. So old Emmett Anglin, a good friend of mine, he and I had flown together in World War II in Korea, so they set up a bank account in a little town out in Idaho. Let's call it East Split Lip, Idaho. It's some little place out there. And, uh, but some that not anywhere near a Federal Reserve Bank or anything like that. So that's where they do their banking, because they knew from the time they wrote a check, they had somewhere between 10 and 12 days before the check would ever get to the bank. So they would at times have a half a million dollars out, but they didn't have a dime to cover it. They call that the float. Many businesses are operating on a float. Checks that money that they have, uh, that they're using, and the banks aren't collecting interest on it. And man, if that ever makes a Rockefeller Rothschild mad, free money, that blows their mind, particularly when it's up to 20%. Mm -hmm. So they're after this electronic funds transfer because it'd be an instantaneous transfer. There'd be no more float. Now then, uh, the big advantages. Uh, one advantage would be, by the way, uh, I forgot to talk. You've seen these uh, tellers, you know, the terminals that are in, oh, at the bank or anywhere around in airports, and they're all over the place. So if you want some money, this is the way it works. You walk up, and if you got the right card, and it's Master Charge or Visa or American Express, American Express will probably be done away with. But anyway, you just go over and you put the card in. It shows you how to lay it, and you slip it in there, and then a little sign flaps up, or it may be a, a television-type screen with the light reflector lights on and numbers on it, and it says, it'll say, and what did you desire to do? And so, and the thing that's over here on the right, you put in withdrawal. That's what we usually want to do. So <laughs> you put in the withdrawal, and then it says, it flops up and says, and how much did you want to withdraw? and enter that in the center board. So you punch in and so forth that you want to withdraw, and it tells you usually in increments of $25, 25 dollars 7500 And uh, so you punch in what you want, and then it uh, flops up again, and it says enter your personal uh, identification number in the one to the right. And uh, so you punch it in, and the bundle of bills come out, and you got your money. Or you can transfer from your saving to your... You know, you can do anything. And so here on the side, on the whole thing, you can do all of that. And I had a friend that worked for uh, Marriott, and on a Sunday, and he was having guests coming, and he was going to take them out to dinner at a place this was some time ago that, that didn't use cards. And uh, so he remembered that the National Bank of Maryland had these tellers. Uh, people don't like to play with a computer, so they call it Tilly the Teller. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that you'll think there's somebody there. And uh, so old Frank went down and he drove up. You don't have to get out of the car. It's right there. And so he got his card out and he stuck it in and he went through the whole thing. And then it finally said, "And please enter your personal identification number in the right-hand panel. And he thought, oh my goodness, what is that number? Mm. Oh yeah. So he punched her in and the thing flipped up and says, sorry, you made an error. Try again. And all of a sudden his card disappeared and everything went off. So, man, that's weird. So he called the bank Monday morning and they said, Yes, sir, Mr. Lyons, we have your card. If you can come down and present proper identification, we'll give it back to you. But you see, it's real good. If somebody stole your card, the likelihood of them being able to guess a five-digit number in the right sequence is just impossible almost. Now, they can grant you one mistake. You know, the Lord would do that. He says, go and sin no more. <laughs> you know, once is all right, but twice you lose your card. Now, I think it'd be real interesting, too. Can you imagine some mugger? Now, we got no money now. <laughs> You've had to go down and turn in all your greenbacks and anything you had in the bank. It's all just now a number in a computer. Even the parking meters, everything else, you probably have a card. Digital Corporation has a system that will work with your driver's license. But anyway, 
So the guy sticks a gun in your back and says, give me your money. So you hand him the card. <laughs> What's he going to do with it? Right. Nothing. Nothing he can do with it. If he wants to take you over and force you to use your uh, personal in, uh, identification number, that gets rather complicated and the whole thing. And They'll probably have alarm systems on it and so forth. And anyway, but can't you see a hijacker getting an airplane? Calls up and says, I got 400 passengers up here, and if you don't give me $3 million, I'll uh, blow the whole thing up. And they say, Well, sure, no problem. What's your number? Aha, praise the Lord. So he gives them his social security number, and they said, Fine, your, credit, your, your account has been accredited with $3 million. So he lands, and they let him go. Something has happened, though, on the computer. They flagged him, they marked him. So he goes to the nearest bank teller and he punches in an alarm goes off down the police station and tells him exactly where he is. Or they can get sophisticated and put a trap door in front of the machine when he punches it falls into the... <laughs> falls into the dungeon and he's there until come pick him up the next morning. <laughs> All sorts of conveniences. Now the only disadvantage I see to this system is that if you fell out of the good graces of this outfit and you went around making talks about the International Money Group, <laughs> everywhere you go, you get a red light. They've blocked you out of the system. They do this in Russia now. They've been doing it for years. You can't do anything with Russia without your card, your number. Once they take that away, you don't exist. They did that to Alexander Solzhenitsyn and many others. They call them non-persons. They don't exist. They can't work. They can't buy anything. Again, the only thing they can do is people have to care of them, have to take care of them. And if they're real important people, uh, they'll take your card away if you help them. So you become a non-person too. And that's the way it would be here. Gives them absolute control. Absolute control. You won't have to worry about your income tax. At the end of the year, they'll just send you a bill. They know everything you've been paid. They know everything you bought. The government, if they collected taxes at the current rate on every, all, everything that's bought and sold in the United States, our budget would have approximately a $30 billion excess. Yeah, because there's an estimated $250 billion worth of underground economy. It's conducted with cash of which there's no record. Well, for example, your waiters and waitresses and tips and liquor stores that only report half of the booze they sell, and you go on and on and on on that. Uh, repairmen, uh, the repairmen, uh, most often if you pay them by check, it's twice what it would be if you paid them in cash. I've had people tell me that. Oh, well, I wanted to pay it for a load of wood by check. And he said, well, I'll knock a third off if you'll pay me in cash. So they don't want any record of it because there's no way you can collect it. See, the government doesn't know. They, they've got a big bureaucracy, but they can't follow everybody around seeing what they're doing. But they'll know. Now, there can be an underground economy you can trade barter. In fact, in a, a leisure uh, home or old folks home out in California, and this could work in, in communities, the people there, many of them have many great talents, and they have a, a, a certificate or CHIT system. And say, for example, uh, you're a retired plumber, and the dentist down the street's uh, got a water problem. Well, you go down, and it takes four or five hours for you to fix his problem. He gives you a certificate that he owes you so many hours of work or babysitters, anything else. And that turns out to be money. If you hear of somebody that's got a toothache, well, you can go trade that to them, and they can go to the dentist with it, you know, if you want something he's got or trade a chair for it, whatever you want. So that's what really money is. You're usually, if you're working for a job, you're trading your time for money. And that's all they're doing, except they're outside the system. And so it works real great. It's really going. The government's really concerned. Well, sure they are. The government's upset with it. They're just like the bankers with a the float. They hate the float. They want, to get, <laughs> they want to get their share out of that. They're getting more than their share. So it's coming. I really believe that uh, this will... I think the 1984 thing that you're hearing about is probably a, a little late. I would think probably around 19... Uh, 82 would see this uh, in operation, probably. But 
it's already slipped some. It's not going quite as fast to other complications. But it'll come because the Bible said so. There would be a time that no one would be able to pine or sell without a number, an embossment, or an engraving. And don't ever forget that the number alone doesn't do me. If you read the scriptures, you can see it. That it's the worshiping the beast and his image and et cetera, et cetera. And it's an and in addition to. I don't expect you to believe that. You'll have to resolve it for yourself. And check the scriptures. I've given you every one that I found that has marked or sealed in it. And that's what you're supposed to do is have the whole counsel of God's word. Any questions? Yes, brother. Well, this is interesting. The question is about, the, I should have covered that, the mark on the forehead. But as you said, it's uh, the, le- the actual word says, the mark on their forehead or their right hand. Some people don't have a right hand. Everybody's got a forehead, though. Most <laughs> but anyway. But uh, there could be some problem with the forehead, so the, to the right hand. Labor and, and hand is labor and yeah, the symbolisms. Uh, did you notice that God never marked his people in their hand? The symbolism that Glenn is talking about, if it's, uh, if it's just mine, you have the mind of Christ or Antichrist. If you have the mind of Antichrist, he's going to work you. <laughs> You've got to work. That's the hand. But see, God does the work. We've noticed that in deliverance and other operations, that God does the work. So he just marked you in the forehead so that this other end... Don't ever forget, Satan's mark cannot take the mark of God out. But God can take the mark of Satan out. Doesn't work the other way around. Hallelujah. There are two votes in now this all operation. Satan hates you, and he'll vote against you. God loves you, and he always votes for you, and you break the tie. You can go either way you want. <laughs> Strictly up to you. Now, this mark, I fully expect the mark to be a, a, a number, your Social Security number, possibly on the back of your right hand or for it, maybe both, I don't know. But it would not be visible without a special lighting or a magnetic scanner, one of the two. And so it would not disfigure you and that type of thing. So don't worry about it. But you see, the beautiful part of that is if somebody got your card... They couldn't use it even if they had your personal identification number. Of course, that would be gone anyway. The PIN would be gone. The only way they'd be able to use it is if they took your head along with them or your right hand, and that's a little awkward and that type of thing. So it's a pretty foolproof system. No problem. They transfer it if they can pay it from your Social Security number to their Social Security number. They do it by your name now, and your number becomes your name. You can do everything that we can do today and infinitely faster. But there's a pretty permanent record. We had a little problem with the general accounting office when we set up the center because all the personnel records, uh, they always call for a source document, you know, the original document. Well, and uh, we wanted to put everything on magnetic tape. Well, they didn't want to do that because you can doctor a magnetic tape and it leaves no trace that it's been fooled with. They wanted us to microfilm everything. Well, microfilming is not all that good because it begins to flake off and after years it becomes unreadable and it's bulky and a lot of problems. So we finally got them to allow us to to put it on magnetic tape. And the joke goes that after we got it all on tape and I went into the general to ask him what he wanted to do with the original documents and he said make three copies and burn the original. (laughs) No, it didn't work that way. We already had the permission. Yes, brother. Well, as I said, they can trade. It'd be a barter type thing. But if it if it was involved in money, of which there wouldn't be any, <laughs> they'll have a record of it. That's how they'll handle it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but I bet they figure it out, don't you? Yeah, it's. Uh, There'll be something in there. It's going to be a little more difficult, but I'm sure they'll, they'll figure out some way to rip you off. Uh, let's see. We'll work across here, the lady. Yes, sister. I don't know. I don't know, but uh, 
My wife had an interesting experience talking to a young man. He was home with our son, and the young man was a heathen. And we were sharing at the table, and my wife was telling him what was coming, and that that the, the saints, the people on earth, said it would be as in the days of Peter. And, uh, you know, and Peter and the others, as they'd walk by, and their shadow would fall on people that were sick, and they'd jump up healed. By the way, this has happened uh, already in many places. And this young man was, he looked at her, and he said, well, they'll kill you. And the wife thought about that and says, you know, he was right. Because I had some young people that took on retreats from St. James Episcopal Church. And there was a girl about 14 years old, born with a humpback. And uh, some young people had been born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, laid hands on her, and she was healed instantly. And they came home, and her family cursed us and took her out of the church because she had been healed. They'd rather see her hunchback than to admit that God can heal their child. They like the ritual, but they, you know, having the form of godliness, but denying the power of God, and from such, turn away. Uh, there's some others that hadn't, uh, there was someone in, the lady over here, I believe. I think it's a symbol type thing. It cannot be an identifier number, because everybody's number can't be 666, you know, it won't work. You'll hear all sorts of things like that, and... Uh, I have to see it myself. Uh, that one article about this is the only thing I've seen published. I've gotten it everywhere I'm going, so I assume there's some substance to it. But I would like to see for myself before I would accept it. Uh, I was, it's really interesting, and I thought maybe the next time my wife and I went on a long trip, I would take my camera along. Then you might want to watch this. Have you watched how many road signs will say it's 66 miles to the next town? Between Asheville, North Carolina, and Akron, Ohio, we counted 32 signs that said it's 66 miles to the next town. Is that a coincidence? Not really. Because six is a very strong symbolism in satanic worship. I'll show you something very interesting. Did you know that in the Greek, uh, Greek alphabet that uh, S, the letter S, its numerical equivalent is six. Six, six, six. Social Security System, SSS. <laughs> Could be. As I said the other night, up in Canada, it's their social insurance number, abbreviated. It's their SIN number. You don't have to SIN with it, but some people do. I don't know about that, sister, but you'll be seeing more and more six, sixes and six, six, six. I think that was everybody over here. Then there was someone over here. Yes, sister. The lady. Uh-huh. Yes, ma'am. Well, I think it's very significant. Uh, the first night we talked here, we pointed out all the significant things that indicate 1982 by Bible calculations of uh, that type thing. And so 1982 does end up being a... And I'm of the opinion right now the end of this age will occur in 1982. But the coming of the Son of Man is something else. Definitely is. Definitely is. Because an, a scientist in Australia forecast that we would have massive earthquakes and very highly unusual weather during 1980 because the planets are in such a position that their maximum gravitational pull will be in 1980. Then it will really go out of sight in 1982. And then there will be a maximum influence in 1984 as they go out of phase. The whole thing. So 1984 will probably be a repeat of 1980. Dallas, you know, over 100 degrees and unusual weather, all of that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, we don't know what's going to happen in 82. If, uh, this scientist in Australia said the last time these planets lined up in this exact manner was as in the days of Noah. And Jesus said, "My this coming of the Son of Man, it shall be as in the days of Noah. Yeah, you'll hear a lot of that, and uh, you'll also hear that the money has already been printed for a change. Now, uh, we've discussed this with many. I've briefly talked with Willard Candelon about it and uh, others that have studied it. And everybody is open. We can go to a new currency, or we can skip the whole thing and go to a number. Uh, it could be either way. Just because the government has money printed doesn't necessarily mean they have to use it. They can print some more with your money anyhow. So it just cost you money. It didn't cost him anything. So uh, 
I'm of the opinion we'll go directly to the buying and selling of the number, but it's much simpler. I've been in currency exchanges uh, in the military because up until a few years ago, if you were overseas, you weren't paid in real money. You were paid in military payment certificates, MPC, Mickey Mouse money, we called it. It, (laughs) She laughed back here, and all of you that have been in the military. Fern, had you seen Mickey Mouse money where you ever see? Well, it's uh, it's all paper money. The only thing that was a coin was a penny, and you can't buy anything with a penny anyhow. So you had paper, nickels, and dimes, and quarters, and dollars, and five dollars. The biggest bill would be a 50. And it was pretty neat because they were all a little bigger, a little smaller. The smaller the domination, the smaller the thing. And when all the prostitutes and everybody outside the gate and the black marketers have got a bunch of MPC because that's all the GIs have got. And the GIs can't operate in the black market without selling cigarettes because they're not allowed to have uh, yen or, well, they can have yen or whatever they are, but they can't have any greenbacks. So they get it in, in MPC. So when all the black market and everybody gets a lot of MPC, we lock the gate some night at midnight and change the MPC. And all the people outside the gates got bushels full of the stuff and it's worthless. And so you can see what happens when we're told, and I know some people that have illegitimate money. Some of it was left to them when their husbands died and other things. They've come to know the Lord. Some of it's in thousands of dollars. They got it in the dumbest hiding places you can imagine. But anyway, it's their problem. So when you're told to go down to the bank some Monday morning and turn in all your greenbacks because they're no longer usable now, won't do you any good to keep them because nobody will buy them except if they're collecting them as an antique item. And so when you go trucking down there with a sack full of it and you've never reported on your income tax, you've got a problem. Yes, sir. Uh, you bet. It's certainly not as clear-cut as the fundamentalist had you believe, is it? I'll take the number. I got no problem with it. I'll take the number. Just so you know it's coming. Well, it made it very clear that the reason it's put in there is to make it very clear that the mark alone doesn't bother you. If they'd have just stopped up there within, uh, as most of the fundamentalists did, they just read Revelation 13, 17 and said, oh, you go to hell if you take that number. They didn't bother to take the whole counsel of God's word. If they had, would have never heard of rapture. If they'd have taken the whole counsel of God's word, even if they'd have read uh, Jesus said, Father, don't take them out of the world. Well, that, you know, that can't be. So uh, it's the same way here. God put it in there so that we'd have the whole picture and would realize that taking the number, the mark, or the embossment or engraving, uh, as long as you don't worship the beast, is really no problem. And he even reassured you four times before you get to Revelation 13 that everybody on the earth will worship me except you, except those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So see, it's all very clear. That's the reason God put it in there, so you'd know clearly. There'd be no doubt about it. That's the reason it's important for you to read the Word for yourself. Don't believe me. I can't be responsible for it. See, if I'm wrong, then you go to hell with me. So you better read it for yourself. God's going to hold you responsible. He holds me responsible for what I teach. He said, if I mislead anyone, it's better that I was never born or had a millstone tied around my neck and cast in the sea. So I try to look these things pretty thoroughly. After I saw a millstone, you got one out here in the back. If you think you can swim with that thing around your neck, <laughs> you can't. So that's the reason he put it in there, so you'd know. My people perish for the lack of knowledge. you got to read. Or, yes. I don't really know. I, uh, I would know. It, it's very clear the reason I don't know is because my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I could speculate with you. Certainly the Rothschilds, most of the Rockefellers, Mr. Wittivine, all those people, they worship, uh, they're Satan worshipers. Uh, they're, they call themselves Luciferites. Benjamin Franklin was a Luciferite. Well, it said the Christians would uh, possess, would uh, buy and sell as if they possess not. So things don't possess Christians or shouldn't. Or shouldn't. Some people still need deliverance in that area. Yes, sir. No problem. That's what those funny little marks on your telephone are. You have a number. Somebody comes in and wants to buy it, they got a number. So you sit down and some of those little code things, you can punch them and you'll have direct access to the computer. And all they have to do is enter their number and their PIN number and that certifies that they're there. And then you enter it, it's all put in your number and taken out of their number. It's just that simple. They want absolute control. 
absolute control. Glory to God, many people are doing that. Isn't that great? I would recommend it highly. Not just for the fact that the number has any significance, just the fact that you may not have anything to buy or sell even if you had a number. Because uh, Kirkpatrick and the others all control the unions, and when they get ready to tumble the United States into a heap, uh, the transportation will just come to a screeching halt, and the cities won't get any food, and the filling stations won't have any gas, and, and et cetera, et cetera. The electric lights will go out, and all those exciting things. About 1982 to 85? Mm -hmm. May not. But it's sure a lot better to be a year early than a day late. And if, uh, if you're storing food, so what? You can always eat it. If you're storing gold, that's another problem. <laughs> Abs absolute control. That's what they're after. One of the things that's holding them up is they haven't been able to disarm the American public yet. You still have guns. You might even want to get some old brass and start reloading your own. Now, again, uh, I just can't tell you what a blessing it is to be here, as Brother Glenn is saying, because I've known Glenn, I've watched his work, and I've, I've heard all the nasty rumors about what went on here. But I knew Glenn and Irma that they couldn't be far wrong, and if they were wrong, I'd go the same route. But uh, uh, it's my blessing to be here. And it's, uh, you'll never know what a blessing it is to see people that are going on into the Holy of Holies. I'm not quite sure how to get there, but bless God, I'm ready. You have to make a decision to stay. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home.